You're listening to the Standard Podcast, eye-opening for your ears. สวัสดีค่ะโบสวิตรีนะคะ This is We Need to Talk Podcast, podcast talk show ภาษาอังกฤษสำหรับคนไทยที่ใช้ภาษาอังกฤษค่ะ Hi, you guys. Welcome to our special episode of We Need to Talk, and this is our 46th episode, and it's going to be the season finale too. We have been with you guys for one whole year, and the past three seasons have been such a fun experience for me. Okay, so why does it sound like a goodbye? No way, we're not going anywhere. Our brand new season will be back before you know it. But as you guys might have already known, I'm about to take some time off. So this is basically the maternity leave special episode. As a matter of fact, by the time this episode is published, my daughter will have already been born. Can't wait to meet her or. This is the future. It's like, hi, baby, you're here. Like, I'm with you right now. So I'm super nervous and I'm super excited. At the time we're recording this, I'm about less than two weeks away to my due date. So we're very excited, and I, I don't feel like I'm ready because, <laughs> to be honest, I haven't had time to do anything. Well, I I honestly want to take a picture for you guys right now, so you guys could see. The behind the scene of all of this, we're actually at my house right now, recording this as I'm laying down in my bedroom with all of our staff and all all, all our producing team. They're here <laughs> just for this special episode. So I've been on um, bed rest for about two weeks now. And I haven't had time to set up the nursery. I haven't had time to go out and shop, and so I have been doing a lot of online shopping. You know, you guys should be careful with online shopping because you don't really actually need to leave your house. You ended up spending more money online than when you were actually walking around in the mall. <laughs> so beware of that. So first, we were supposed to have three more episodes before the end of the season. But due to certain circumstances, <laughs> my bed rest situation. What that means is that I have to lay down all day, all night, and I'm only allowed to get up to go to the bathroom, or if it's necessary. And I'm not allowed to walk up and down the stairs, and like, very minimal walking and very minimal standing up time. So, um, and that's due to the fact that. My baby is in such a hurry to come out of my womb to see the world. Right now, her head is actually right up against the inner cervix, and like on the right on the wall of my inner cervix, and and it it was a little too early for my doctor's liking, so he said, you know, if you want to make it past thirty seven weeks, you should be in bed. So for her sake, and I want her to be fully developed and everything. So I'm trying to extend time. I'm trying to buy as much time as I can. I have to tell her every day, baby girl, don't hurry, don't rush, take it easy. So that's why the bed rest. <laughs> and excuse my huffing and puffing because I like seriously, I, the baby is getting so big that she's. Up against my lungs and everything, so uh, my breath are very short. So it it sounds like I'm taking a deep breath like all the time. I'm tired all the time. So excuse that. <laughs> um, let's see. So since this is our last episode before I take a long break, not too long, hopefully. <laughs> I'd like to walk you through our amazing season two and season three, so we can re-listen to some of the best bits together. And just in case you missed any of them, you can just go back and listen to the full episodes while I'm away. Or if you just want to hear my voice, if you miss me, you can go listen to those episodes as well. And this is why this episode is so special. We have some of the unaired conversations. That didn't make the final cut due to time limit per episode. By the way, I guess this is the first time I'm doing this on my own without any guests or any special guest host, like we used to do before. So this is my first solo episode. Yay! Hopefully, you won't get bored of just my voice. All right, so let's go.
Our second season started with Pinok Pontamni in January of 2018. At the time, he just moved back to Thailand and he just had his big concert. He dropped by and talked to us about his life in the U.S. And that was the first time I actually had a chance to meet him. And I was so impressed because he's such, like, you know, his songs are very romantic and he sounds very soft and gentle. And that's how he comes off in real life. It's like, he looks and, and acts and his charisma is the exact same way you would imagine. What impresses me the most about him is that he's a true artist. He doesn't really care about fame. He just wants to make good music and produce great arts. And not only in Thailand, but abroad in the States as well. And he is really passionate about what he does. And I really admire that about him. So here are some highlights from Pino Panchamni. I've been away for 10 years to San Francisco and I, because of my wife pursue her master degree mm. and also PhD as well. Wow. That's why it takes 10, 10 years. years. <laughs> ah, that's why. So that's why you decided to go. Yes. This is the San only Francisco. reason, the only reason to to be with my wife. That's good. <laughs> that's a great answer because I mean, from a wife's perspective, I think it's important mm-hmm. for a family to yeah. be together. Right. The, um, the most important thing in my life too. She's the most precious thing. Oh, <laughs> I hope she's listening cuz she would be melting. <laughs> no, I don't think she care. <laughs> I don't think she care at all. <laughs> so maybe we oh yeah, plan may so long there. Happy oh and my manager is here too. And uh, she just confirmed. She said yeah. ding. <laughs> <laughs> then on our next episode, we had so much fun talking to Adat Adam, one of the best known English teachers in Thailand. We all know that his Thai is amazing, and we've heard him speak English all the time, but. Not in a long conversation or in an interview type of situation like that day on our show. In fact, we had so much fun talking, and that recording session actually ran for almost 90 minutes. Here's some conversations you didn't hear on the published version of that episode. So, since you are connected to a lot of social media, you can't avoid the trolls and all the drama. <laughs> and apparently, you've had a lot of those too, right? Um, how did you feel when you experienced it firsthand? And there's so much hate out there in the world of the internet. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've had different responses and reactions over the years. When I was a little younger, mm-hmm. I, I would respond more and try and like. Uh, top Korean, right? Like yeah. try and like, you know, <laughs> respond to them and and try and make make a, a statement back to them and yeah. and like put him them yeah. back in their place. Yeah, exactly. Put them put them in their place. Here's a little taste of your own medicine, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, over the last couple of years, I've I've gotten older. I am coming up on 33, as we mentioned. I mean, I, I ignore them most of the time now, but every once in a while, I see an opportunity to you know, make a little statement that that'll be positive. Like someone will will say something really like is just mean spirited and and uncalled for. Yeah. And it's sometimes they'll just like spell something wrong or something. And I feel like, huh. The last one was like a year or so ago. Someone said, Oh, so I said, Oh, And and I got a picture of it. I got a, a screenshot of it, and mm-hmm. then I put it on my my Facebook because I knew it would have been like it would be like. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I knew, I that's knew funny. I could like you know throw a little drama out there in Thailand, and sometimes drama is funny, but most of the time I just ignore trolls these days because yeah. I I realize that they're just people that they probably I've heard I can't remember the exact phrase or the the words. It's something like your biggest troll is usually your biggest fan. Mm-hmm. Because they follow everything, yeah. and they, they and the fact that they're criticizing you deep down, they actually like you. Yeah, and it's almost, it, almost like they're they're just like 
they want to get a reaction out of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So because or else they wouldn't watch all of your stuff. Exactly. Because in order to criticize you, they need to know what they're talking about, which means they watched your stuff. Exactly. So they're your biggest fans. That's a exactly. great way to approach that. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of last year, there was this Thai animation called Gao Satra that had become such a phenomenon. I was also a part of it because I voiced the only female character named Xiao Lan. Now, in the month of July 2018, the animation is supposed to have made its first screening in China. And I recently, I just saw on Facebook, there's a schedule for other countries, I think in South America and all over uh, in other places in the world. So... Back then, at the end of last year, I personally asked Pikan, the director, to come and talk to us on the show. And he said yes. Normally, in movies or um, any art form of work, the director or the producers usually put a little part of themselves into the film. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do any of that? Well, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, the so when we, when we put in the money together, mm -hmm. um, we all had... An agreement, you know. Mm -hmm. If you put in this much, mm -hmm. you get a character. <laughs> you know, if you don't put in this much, you don't get a character. You know, so I love it. So you know, um, you know, my uncle mm -hmm. is in there. My dad is in there. <laughs> you know, yeah, everyone has a little bit of ca their character in there. Which um, which characters? Uh, so can I can I tell you guys? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't so. know. Can you? <laughs> is it a secret? So are you I gonna mean, get in trouble? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> but I mean, there's like the main character. Yeah, is you know one of my uncle, the dad of the main character, ah. Ot, is my dad. You know what? Yes, I didn't know that. Yes. So, uh, so for example, my dad's name is Kanjana Pan. Uh huh. Jamun Pan. Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. So we have characters in there. Um, one of my other uncles, he. His, uh, he loves flying eagles. Mm -hmm. So he's Seo Lan's uncle. Oh, wait. Did they use his real name? Put uh, nickname. Ah, uh, okay. Nickname, Tao Choi. Tao Choi. That's his nickname. Yeah. So we have all That's the characters cool. in there. You know, so next film, um, if I put in like... I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe I could get a character. <laughs> Bo. <Yeah. laughs> so plain. Yeah, that, that was you know that was like the way to to bring all the investors in. You want a character in the movie? Put in this much, you know. So that's cool. So then everyone you know was like, oh yeah, I want a character. You know, so I'll put in there. So it's it was a good it was a good first start, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's how we started raising more funds too. That was like one of the ways. Um, but you know, everyone enjoyed it. You know, everyone had had a great time. Who would have thought that our show would have had a chance to welcome a boxer? But not just any boxer, a very talented boxer who is also a model. Originally from France, but can speak English and Thai fluently. Not to mention that he also owns and runs a successful boxing gym business. Anton Pinto. Have you ever <sighs> been... Knocked out, like completely blacked yes. out, unconscious. I, yeah, really? I have been knocked out one, once, twice, twice. I, I think, yeah, twice. How long were you knocked out for? Like, how long were you it's unconscious like, for? Yeah, I would think it was like a few, probably a few seconds, like ten seconds, something like that. Yeah. What happens when you're actually knocked out? It's not. It doesn't actually hurt. It's like when you, if you pass out, if if you have ever experienced passing out, yeah, you just wake up and you're just like, well, what the, what what happened? Yeah. You know, what, what what's going on? And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. You know. Like I don't think knock it, getting knocked out is like the the scariest thing. Like yeah. when you, once you get hit and you have to like keep going on, that uh, that's when it hurts. But getting knocked out was just like it's like black a nap. It's like yeah. a quick nap, and, yeah. and you wake up. It's like yeah. oh, time passed. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I, I've been knocked down. Sometimes and and you get knocked down, and the first thing like the first reflex that I have always, whatever happens is that I want to get up as fast as I can because I'm scared that the ref would start counting and uh. I would lose a lot of points. So no matter what, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on, but I want to fight. I'm up. I'm good. I'm up. I'm good. So whenever something like that happens, I'll try to get up as fast as I can. Yeah. Our next guest was the lovely Brazilian woman who has traveled all the way from a small town in Brazil and somehow found her way here to Bangkok, fell in love with Thailand and decided to settle down here. Bruna Silva impressed me with her sweet smile and a very sweet personality. 
I really enjoy talking to her. She's such a visionary person and she's such a sincere person that when I talked to her, I felt like I learned a lot from her experience and just, just it was an eye-opening conversation because to be where she's from and just telling us about her background and her family and her life in her small town in Brazil was just so insightful and how determined she was to get out of that small town and how she has accomplished her dreams and how successful she is now. So I really enjoyed talking to her. So here are some highlights from Bruna Silva. I taught myself English mm. when I was 12 years old. So because Brazilians don't speak English at all. right? Yeah. And um, I come from a very simple family. Mm -hmm. Like my dad, he was, I think, the only one who wanted a better life for himself. So he started, like, uh, studying for, for the Air Force. So he kind of took himself out of the situation. So I had a better a better future because he uh, had a better life growing up than my parents did because my dad worked really hard. Yeah. But my family mindset, like my grandmother, my aunties, they all have, like, this small town mindset. That's just your reality. Just deal with it. Like, they blame everything else around them. Mm -hmm. They're just like, yeah, we're like this because of the economy. We're like this because we don't have a, a good school to study. Like, they will blame everything else. Yeah. They will never, like, try to develop themselves to be better. The reason why I started learning English is because I just wanted to find a way out. I just wanted to do something better for myself. So I... And people would say, no, you cannot just learn English by yourself. You have to go to the States. You have to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I watched this, this documentary one day. This guy, um, he's like very poor. He comes from the slums in Rio. And he used to work at a five-star hotel in Copacabana, like the, the beach where the rich people are. Mm -hmm. So he would commute one hour from, from the slums to, to the hotel where he used to work. And he mm -hmm. used to use that time to learn English. So he had a dictionary. He was learning English. And he learned English. Like he can actually speak English. So I was yeah. like, I can do it too. So <laughs> I started learning English by myself when I was 12. How? After I saw this. Just, you said you carried a dictionary with yes, you, right? Because I saw him doing that. Yeah. He was like on a train, uh, one hour commute to, to work. And he was like looking at his dictionary and he, he actually learned. And then I started... Um, translating movies so ah. i watched movies and i'll stop and i would translate right, and you did it all by yourself <laughs> yeah wow. i like nobody else around me could speak english only my dad because i would actually steal his books because he's from the air force so he has to take like english tests right mm -hmm. so i'll steal his cds and then i'll just like learn and and sometimes i'll talk to him and he'll be like wow how did you learn yeah. he's like, <laughs> like what? all of a sudden you're you're learning and because i was like i was if i if i get hooked on something and get very obsessed yeah. and I, I want to do it well do they teach english in school in brazil oh it's really bad really yeah even the, the teachers they're they don't speak english well uh, uh -huh. so it was it was just like once a week kind yeah. of thing like one hour <laughs> class and mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't that great how long yeah. did it take you to learn to learn english to become fluent well, I started writing journals in English when I was 12. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember when I go back to my home and I go back and I look at this, those diaries and I go back like the, sec the by the third diary, I'm already writing pretty well. So I think it took me around two years to, to get, you know, to get a good understanding and watch a movie and be able to watch it and understand. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks. In the month of February, we tried out new things. Since we have a chance to talk to awesome guests all the time, we often get carried away and lose track of time. And sometimes a huge chunk of the show have to be cut off. So we decided to split one episode into two. The first one we talk as usual. But the second one, we invite them to play some fun games and quizzes, starting with Yip So. Oh my goodness, that was such a fun episode because... I, I mean, I've talked to her sister before, but I've never really had a real conversation with um, neither of them. So that was my first time talking to Yip So. And she is such a quirky girl. I love everything about her. I love her personality. I love her quirks. I think it's just about the right amount. And um, she's very real and down to earth. I love her sincerity. And I had so much fun um, talking and playing games with her. The subject that... I was like really, really bad at is probably PE. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think I, I have I have something against physical movement, physical activities. <laughs> like I'm like programmed like to hate it. Yeah, and your sister's the opposite, right? Yeah, she like she do. works out like crazy. Yeah. She really likes that, and it makes her really 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 healthy and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. good, good for her. Yeah, mm. not have me. you have you tried some? <laughs> I tried. I think. The kind of exercise that I like most is probably yoga. Ah. Yeah, because I know it just felt right. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I have to go and like like run yeah. a lot, is is really not for me. It's yeah. like too torturing. Is like, life is not supposed to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to be this tired. Yeah, yeah. I I feel you. I I I wasn't a fan of PE, but I mean I. I was okay. You do you, like do sports? Yeah, I I did. I played basketball and I ran track. I hate balls, but. <laughs> That's but a, it's so fun. That's a bad sentence to say. <laughs> you hate balls. That's a really, really bad, bad way of putting it. I think all kinds of like round objects have something against me too. Every time I was like, just like walking around in like a basketball court or like a soccer field. Yeah. It just like it comes, comes at right, you yeah, right into and, and not even like to my arms yeah. or legs. It's like right to my face. It's Every like you have time. a magnet for yeah. balls on your face or something. Ball magnet. <laughs> Oh, I just realized what I said. <laughs> oh man! Come on! Could oh? Could some of like some Sport of this has balls. really has to be edited out? Okay, please. <laughs> Bam p i t i p a n has become well known nationally from hosting the popular show Top Chef Thailand, but we also found out that his English is also very good. He does voiceover for commercials and radio spots. And he also emcees bilingual events all the time, so we decided to contact him and ask him to be on our show, which he accepted happily. Before the show, what I did was basically traveling show. Yeah. So what I do is just enjoy, be there at the location, and hey, check this out. Uh, this building right here is built 400 years ago, and you know, built by this architect and this and that and blah yeah. blah. And you know, this food, wow, it tastes so good. You know. You just present and just be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all facts. Mm, and it's all facts. But for this show, mm-hmm. it's a reality show. Yeah. And I don't know cooking at all. I don't cook, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I just love eating. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I just love hosting. The hardest part is there's so much pressure on me because I had to give the instruction, mm-hmm. and the instruction are different in each episodes. Yeah. Uh huh. And it's a secret. It's a top secret. It had to come out from my mouth, and I had to be able to deliver and get their reactions. Yeah, that's that's the golden part of of all reality shows yeah. is to get people's that, reaction, mm-hmm. their reaction. And if I don't deliver, or if I forgot the script, or if I stutter, that moment even, uh-huh, would be ruined. That moment would be ruined, and you cannot take it back. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Even though it's taped, but it's kind of like a one-time take. The month of March 2018 would be the month of friends and families, so to speak. มีแต่คนกันเองทั้งนั้นแล้วก็แวะเวียนมาโปรโมทรายการต่างๆอัปเดตเรื่องราวต่างๆ Starting with me, yours truly. <laughs> On episode 27th, I officially announced my pregnancy right here on the show. Then for the next two episodes, we have two of our past guests revisiting the show. p i p a n Jakobsen came to talk about her new podcast, "Are You Okay?" and p i s i n d i came back and talked to us about her new podcast, "Balance Mama," which I'm sure I'm gonna go back and listen to all over again because now I'm a mama. And I heard it was you who came up with the name of the show. Yes. What's What's the show called? It's called Balanced Mama Podcast. It's about just trying to be a balanced mom. How did you come up with the name? It's actually something I have been toying around. Anyway, I, it's something that I'm always interested in. Mm-hmm. I just in my nature. Yeah. As a mom, I'm always looking for mom hacks and and how to be a better mom, and also not to lose myself in just being a mom. And mm-hmm. I think that's something really important. Um, I try to live a balanced life, and so it was just kind of. Coming together at the right time in the right place, and yeah. I think people buy it because it it just looks like you are so well put together. Yeah. I mean, I follow your Instagram. You look like you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's all a scam. 
<laughs> or is it just for Instagram? <laughs> no, but I mean that's it, right? Everyone's yeah. trying to trying to do their best, and and you think everyone's got it under control. I'm not gonna post the pictures where I'm like tearing my hair out. Yeah. Although if you do follow my stories, there are moments where I'm like, I'm losing it. Yeah. I'm really losing it, but that's that's all part of being a balanced mom. Yeah. You you have your good days and your bad days, and that's okay. คุณคะคุณต้องฟังนะคะอายุโอเคเนี่ยค่ะเพราะว่าแม้กระทั่งเราเองอ่ะพอเราทํารายการเองเรายังรู้สึกสะดุกเลยเราก็ยังแบบอ๋อ so I am okay <laughs> thanks be now I always thought I'm not okay you know so um, I think it answers a lot of your um, questions. That you probably think alone in your head, whether it's about you or it's about your family or your friends. So, apart from knowing a little bit more about psychological aspect of it, then you learn how to adjust yourself to different kind of people as well. So, subscribe. Are you okay? And then you'll be okay. For the last episode of March, we had Pita Pipu who came. And talk to us about his live show, the Standard Daily. But the good things about this show is a live show on Facebook, mm-hmm. so it's totally different from the live shows that I have done all my life through the TV. Yeah. So it's kind of different because people who watch you on Facebook, they can get bored of you so easily. They will change the channel to watch something else so yeah. quickly. If they feel like the things that they are watching right now is not so interesting, mm-hmm. so that's kind of difficult part that I have to improve mm-hmm. more in the future. I, I kind of have fun every single day because you have chance to meet new other faces on your show. Mm-hmm. So you might have to talk to someone that you think that oh, one is a lifetime. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to this guy, mm-hmm. and you will learn something from them. Yeah. Yeah. Some are so cool. Some might not that cool, but you will learn something from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we had this one amazing guest, who, by the conventional definition, may not be considered as a celebrity, quote unquote, but she's definitely one of the most popular influencers on YouTube with more than eight hundred thousand subscribers today. The last time we talked, it was just a little over six hundred thousand. That basically means she gained two hundred thousand subscribers in less than three months. How amazing is that? Her name is Peachy, or you might be more familiar with the hashtag Stephen Opa, who is her fiance. We talked about the life. In London, and also their business that helps Thai students experience the best school life in the UK. Fun fact: these two episodes are literally the most downloaded on We Need to Talk podcast. Hi! <laughs> Yay! Welcome, and thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love the British accent. I, I don't do have it. one. It's it's, like, it's it's more like British influenced. I would say so. I mean, every time that people ask what accent this is, mm-hmm. I would just say my own. Yeah, yeah. just like when Pilu Golf, loy Pilu Golf, I just say like he has his own accent. It too. is, it is, because like, I don't think it's British, but mm-hmm. I don't think it's American either. Mm-hmm. When I'm drunk, I sound a little bit more American. But <laughs> really, oh, we need to get you. Drunk. I want to hear you in, in your American accent version tonight, probably. <laughs> What made you fall in love with the country? Hmm. I think it's the diversity uh, of it. I feel like the country itself like give the vibe that everyone has rooms to do something. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be rich. To do certain things, like I mean, you can be like in the middle class, mm-hmm. and you can still live good life. All the system there, like public transport and everything, like they made it so that normal people can live good life. Mm-hmm. Whilst in some country, they might it, it might not be that way. Mm-hmm. Like you probably need to be rich to some point to live such. Okay, life. Mm-hmm. Like you might be struggling a little bit to like, you know, you need to uh, strive to have a better life. But there, I feel like there's always rooms for like new ideas, new generations, new startups, and um, people who do business, people who do design. They appreciate like all sort of subjects, all sort of area, and I think that's that's really good. For the next episode, we got another tall girl, and this one is fierce. 
Grace was the winner of the Face Thailand season three. I had a lot of fun talking to her too, and I've seen her different sides. You know, not the modeling side. I see her sixth sense side with her ghost stories and fun childhood stories, and just getting to know her better. And of course, the highlights that we picked today has got to be the ones when she told us about those two times she saw ghosts. You have? Ah, uh, yeah. Really? Yes. When? Where? How? Okay, I was driving. Uh, it was during the daytime. Yeah. I was driving on a motorway. It was actually very weird and scary because it was during the daytime. The sun was shining like really bright. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I I saw like two men just. Holding on, another, the car in front of me. Yeah, actually two. What? Yeah, I know, right? Like holding on to the back holding of the car. Holding on to the back of the car. One was on the back, and the other was on the side. And clearly, it was like they were not. They were not looking good at all. <laughs> they were looking like um, the shirt were ripped off and stuff like that. Actually, was it that was not once. And another time was actually in my house. I was I was about to to leave to the airport, mm-hmm. and I was packing, and all of a sudden I saw one huge like a guy painted in black with you know red Thai style short like jonga ben yeah. like shorts, just ran and jumped over my my suitcase. What the heck? What did you do? Like, did you like scream and like ran out of your room? No, I started to sing. I was like, because somebody told me before that if you see a ghost, you should start singing because they actually scared. So I sang like, and it was so really? bad. Yeah, <laughs> I sang really badly. That's, I shout really. I loud. did not know that. And the funny thing is that. I'm not even kidding here. This is truth, okay? My brother was showering upstairs. Yeah. That I started to sing like really badly, very loud, and my brother's like just shouted from the toilet, like stop singing. <laughs> and I shouted back, "You have no idea what I'm going through right now. Just let me sing." Oh my god. On season one, we had Philip who won the title, the Face Men Thailand. At the beginning of season three, we got a chance to talk to another contestant from the Face All Star. Joseph was another guest. I had such a great time talking to. We get to see his different side of acting. I mean, who knew he went to school in England for acting? And he is very passionate about acting and wanting to direct and produce his own movie and getting to talk a little bit about his personal life with his girlfriend and just getting to know him better than what we see on the face, which is mainly about modeling. So I had a great time talking to him. So here are some highlights from Joseph Angelo. I don't know if I should go to America at this moment. It just—it so- seems a bit dodgy. I don't know, but um, let dodgy. me with open house. That's like dodgy. that's like—is that a British thing or is that yeah, like an Australian guess, thing? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think it is. It's British, but like international schools, people they say it. What what does dodgy. it mean? It's kind of like skeptical. It's kind of like something's not right about it. Like you know, you want to dodge it, yeah. like dodgy. Kind of, yeah, no, kind of like he's suspicious. Something something about him isn't uh. right. Okay. Not not kind of like awkward, but more like, kind of like um, if you see a guy like with a big coat, yeah, you know, or he's like hiding something, like oh, he he looks dodgy, yeah, like you don't want to, you know, uh, yeah. Okay. You know what? My growing up in Phuket because I grew up in an international school, yeah. and it's just my my accent. I don't know if you noticed, but it's like a mashup. If I speak English, it's a mashup of everything. Yeah, it's like Australian, English, American, like Thai, Asian, twang. But it's 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 very it's I I could see it as an an American accent. Yeah, yeah. I think I think because it's heavily based on watching uh, TV. TV, right? Yeah. But then when I went to the UK, I had to learn because I went to acting school. I had to learn like all the dialects and all the like voice coaching and like. Oh my god! So you like, get... what, you want me to do it in accent? Yeah. Uh, yes, no, please. it's so embarrassing. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do? Like what? What type? Like did you, did you have to learn different types? Like all types? Yeah. Like I had to learn. Accents where like I like, will never ever have to use, like, you know, like by what I look like. Like Irish accent. Oh, Irish is actually the hardest, it's and I so can't. Hard. I can't like I can only like imitate um like like you know Conor Conley. McGregor, you know yeah. Conor McGregor, like um the MMA fighter, mm-hmm. the Irish like very ah, famous guy yeah, yeah. who like trash talks. Yeah. I can't do it, but he's kind of like um he goes like because 
uh, Irish, so you will, they won't pronounce the T's. Like, they're going, um, you do nothing, you do nothing, <laughs> you do nothing, you do fucking nothing. Like, it's, <laughs> but it's very, like, yeah, it's British, like, like, UK has so many dialects, but it's, oh, man, it's just so much to learn. And, like, as well as Thailand, you know, yeah. like, like, Pasa Thai and, like, Nu, and, like, because I'm from Phuket, and I actually, I can speak Thai, even though, like, I don't know what I, I'm saying. I'll be like, my plu, my plu, a lion, a lion, a lion, like. <laughs> Then came one of the most unexpected guests ever. Oh my goodness, Kun Mai. Seriously, I would have never, ever in a million years thought that I would have a chance to even interview her. And not only was I honored, but I had such a great time talking to her. She was very down to earth and you could see how smart this woman is and how she has these visions to preserve certain cultures from Thailand even though she grew up abroad I found that impressive and I I, I like her daddy jokes (laughs) to be honest I didn't think I was gonna see that side of her but I did so here's some of the awesome things she said on that episode is it hard being you is it hard being me in what sense like uh, with who I am or in general, in being general, my, um, no. I mean, I think nothing is. It just depends on how you view life. I don't think that everything is what you make of it. Mm-hmm. And I think, in terms of, let's say, my situation in Thailand, which I grew up in the U.S. for, I spent twenty, almost thirty years. I spent thirty years in the mm-hmm. United States. So when I come here, and uh, you know, all the, it's just very, very different. And, you know, these little quirks and adjusting myself and having more attention on myself, which I, I'm actually very shy about. So it takes a lot for me to, I have to, every day I have to really food, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm very, you know, when you go out and there's so many people around and they, you have to smile the time when sometimes you're a little stressed. So a lot of, t- a lot of it, if it's difficult, it's in the sense that I have to really, uh, adjust in terms of it's okay to be a little nervous and being shy is all right but mm-hmm. you have to push push outside of that box and get used to having a lot of people around or talking more or uh, doing things you're uncomfortable with and in that sense it's difficult but I don't think it's that hard and it's exciting change is exciting and being around people here have been exciting and I don't think it's that hard. Everything's hard. So I don't know. For me, I don't struggle with being me. Yeah. It's always, you always struggle with the little things, but the little insecurities and, you know, so what I said, okay, am I talking too much? If Did I make that joke and it really didn't do very well <laughs> and she took it very personally? Five, five, five plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I respond to co- to like in awkward moments here. But I wouldn't say, yeah, the answer, I guess, is long-winded answer is that it's hard in a way, but it's not in another way. But I like things being challenging. I think it's fun for me. So I guess hard, but in a way that's good. Our show doesn't only have just stars, like actors, actresses, musicians, or models. But... We do try to look for people from different industries too. Nong Aitim Parit wouldn't call himself a politician just yet, but he's definitely heading towards that direction and could give us a lot of opinions and perspectives on the subject. We had a lot of fun talking about several things when we were recording this episode to the point that he actually had to call and push back his next appointment on that evening so that he could have a longer interview with us, which I really appreciated. And here's some part of the conversation we really didn't want to cut off, but had to due to the time limits. Do you think it's possible that politics could corrupt good people? And how can you make sure that that would never happen to you? I mean, if you're, if you're good, I think... <laughs> <laughs> naturally you shouldn't be prone to corruption but this is an interesting question because I actually had a kind of an acquaintance and a friend who was interested initially to to do politics mm-hmm. and I I got in a conversation with him and said like do you want to to help me with the Democrat party help reform the party and he said I don't feel I'm strong enough in the sense that 
if someone offers me like a like an easy way towards like uh, corruption or, or or shortcut something something dodgy, I'm not sure I'm strong enough to say no. So until I I, I am sure that I can always say no to these things, then I will not do it. Oh wow! Corruption is not about ethics, not just about ethics, right? Number one is if you think of, if you think of bribes, right? Taking bribes, sure, there's an element of ethics to it because if you're if you are good quotation mark, then you wouldn't take bribes or pay bribes. But it's also about economics. Think like, why do people offer bribes, right? Number one is they go to government services and it's so slow. Mm-hmm. So they offer bribes because they want a speedy, speedy service. They go to the, some government services and it's not clear how their applications are going to be judged, what criteria is used. Therefore, they, they pay a bit of bribe just to make sure that the application is, is, is successful. So instead of just focusing on ethics, if you focus on the economics and think about if you improve the services to be quicker, if you improve the criteria to be clearer in how things are assessed, then you just eliminate that market for bribes. So for me, like corruption is more than just about ethics. You don't just need to be good. You need to create a system that disincentivizes and just limits the room for any corruption. On We Need to Talk Season 1, we had Lisa Dawson, who was the first runner-up from MasterChef Thailand, also Season 1. Recently, we had Pikoff and Nong Wa Tham from MasterChef Thailand Season 2. One thing I bet you didn't know is that on that day, we were supposed to get three, not two guests. Unfortunately, Pibang's mom had an accident and had to be hospitalized on that day. So he couldn't make it. It would have been fun getting all three of them together. But the good news is that his mom has made a full recovery and is doing just fine. Do you photograph your own food? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Because uh, when, I, when I cook myself, I'm always really hungry. <laughs> I want to eat it right away. Yeah. And you know, when when the picture is not perfect, I'm not really want to photograph it. Yeah. I need I need some time to spend on. So mm-hmm. if I cook food for myself and then I spend time to photograph it, mm-hmm. the food is getting cold. Yeah. It's not good anymore. <laughs> mm. So most of the That's time true. I just I photograph on the, on the <laughs> job. My food <laughs> never been photographed. What were you like as a med student? Were you one of those studious students who studies all the time? Or were you, you know, you, ha- you still had time to goof around a little bit, mm-hmm. balancing both? Um. Why is Pigolf laughing? <laughs> 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 there has bit. to be some juice here. <laughs> first, of, first of all, I'm not a nerd. I would say I'm, I'm an activist at the med school. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of activities and I also run for the president yeah. for, for the Sirat uh, Medical Student Council and I have a lot of time going around and have the free time like take a photo or cooking and partying <laughs> a little bit it's normal <laughs> it's a normal teenage life which is good because there's this stereotype you know that oh doctors had have to be to wear nerds, glasses you know? and read yeah. books and be a nerd like yeah and that's not necessarily true mm, and you maybe can you just can, only just only the 10 percent of the, yeah. the medical mm. students and then we had the chance to welcome one of our ultimate dream guests we were so lucky that Piluk Goff also brought Kun Paul, his partner, and according to them, it was their first time ever giving an interview together. We were so honored. So how good was your English when you met Kun Paul? It was all right. I don't think we ever had any problems communicating. Mm-hmm. I think it was, yeah, it was very good. And I asked him once, I asked him to be pedantic, to, to, correct, to correct me. And he's been doing that, which is brilliant. But <laughs> been doing it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but, still, but still, he makes me nervous. You know, every time when I'm with him, like, it's like my brain knows. It's like my brain knows, like, Paul's here, Paul's here. So try to be perfect, try to be perfect. And when I try to be perfect, I make mistakes and it's stupid, you know, and I hate it. I end up feeling really self-conscious when I'm with him and I hate that so I have to tell my brain to stop overthinking mm-hmm. all right try to be perfect he's here he's here he's gonna listen he's gonna fight out <laughs> and the I mean the daft thing is that I don't really it doesn't bother me I don't really personally I don't feel particularly English has to be strict mm-hmm. yeah. and there are different mm-hmm. versions of English the, the way that a lot of people I went to school with spoke um, or speak some other people consider 
that they speak English badly and there's a whole kind of snobbish mm -hmm. judgment thing about that whereas actually that's just how they speak and it's you know how people speak in that part of England but yeah and and, and I mean yeah. even native speakers still don't speak perfect English yeah. we all you know? make mistakes exactly when we speak so. Thai okay making mm -hmm. mistakes is inevitable all right so I'm gonna make mistakes today you don't have to edit Huh. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's part of being a human. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Violet Wattier was our last guest of season three. I love this girl. She's adorable. She's tiny, but she's fierce. She's do the Dao. And I, I love talking to her because I find that we actually share a lot of similarities. And she was a lot of fun to talk to. You wouldn't think that. She looks so sweet, you know, you see her on TV and you see her on different roles and you think she would be this cute, sweet little girl. I mean, she is cute and sweet, but she's a lot feistier and I thought she was a firecracker. I totally admire her, admire her passion, you know, now that she doesn't have any labels, she's out there doing her own thing, following her own path and dreams and actually take actions for it. I have a lot of respect for her. And this is some of my favorite parts of our conversation. I even had like this problem with my a younger girl another year. I mean, like in the canteen, mm -hmm. we have like oven, um, the microwave. Yeah. Because like a lot of people bring their foods to school. And normally it, it should be warm by two plates only. Yeah. But what we do is like we just stuff all the foods in and we don't care like how long it takes to like to hot the heat and the food. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's what we do. And one day, I I like, I I was warming my food, and then I went back to my table, and then I came back to get my food, and my food was was out of the microwave, and I saw this like, like, maybe senior, but junior year, uh -huh. she was like standing in front of it, and I, and I was like, why is my food out here? She's like, oh, it's not getting hot, so I'm just like take out, and you know, she's just like caring about herself, and I was like. This is not the way it works. So I just <laughs> stuff like all the food in it, and like the younger year, like the the freshman one, they're just like they don't know how to handle oh, this situation. Yeah. I just take their food and stuff in the like the the microwave. And it's like, do you have a problem with this? And they, she just shut up after that. <laughs> Good for you. Way to stand up for yourself and for others. Yeah. Including season one. We have interviewed 34 amazing people on this podcast. And I wish I could interview like 100 more at least. And if you guys have any dream guests of yours or any suggestions, please tweet us and make sure you put the hashtag we need to talk or just reach out to my social media and I'll make sure I'll pass along the messages to our producer. So that's it, you guys. I hope you guys go back and listen to all of our previous episodes if you haven't already done so. Okay, so now I gotta go put on the mom, the mom hat right now. I'll miss you guys so much. But remember, I'll be back before you know it. This is both Savitri. We need to go now. Thank you to everyone who has been with us for the past three seasons. But now I'm going to take care of the baby and we'll go back. Bye bye. The Standard Podcast, eye-opening for your ears.